Thank you very much. I am going to stay out of everybody's way, so please feel free to keep an eye out there. Uh, my name is Chris Barsis. I'm a personal Mac genius. Uh, what does that mean? It means that uh, I'm here to come to you and help you personally. Um, I, before I begin here even, let me take a quick informal poll. How many of you are using social media at all? Facebook, anything? Wow, actually a lot of you. That's, that's more than I expected. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, let me give my two minute little, uh, little commercial in for myself here real fast. Personal Mac Genius, I'm an Apple certified support uh, professional. Uh, there's uh, tests that are done by Apple. I passed it. That makes me certified. Uh, I've been doing this for about uh, 20 years now uh, in two different uh, consultancies. Uh, I've also been a CIO at uh, a uh, aircraft engine uh, disassembly uh, plant, and uh, I was recently interviewed on the Union Tribune's TV on uh, OS X8 and uh, iOS 6, uh, which is a lot of fun. Uh, if you ever get a chance to get uh, interviewed on some a TV, it's just great. It's absolutely a ton of fun. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to throw out a disclaimer here real quick before I begin. I am going to talk about social media and I am going to be bullish on social media. I don't really like social media. Um, what I don't like about social media is the people, the, the way social media is being used. It's uh, the old thing of uh, I love people but I don't like crowds. Uh, same thing here. Uh, social media I think is a very powerful thing, I think it's a very wonderful thing. However, I think that it is, uh, has a tendency to be, uh, bring out the most narcissistic uh, tendencies in a lot of the users. So I'm hoping that by the end of the night, maybe uh, you guys will take away some ideas on how to uh, utilize social media in a way that is not um, annoying to other people. Uh, that being on, moving on, let's talk about social media, privacy in a public world. I have three areas that I want to talk uh, tonight about. First one is going to be about privacy, okay, and everybody wants to have a private life. We all want to believe that uh, we are free from prying eyes and that uh, we have the ability to live our lives in a way that we see fit. Uh, we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about whether or not that really is true anymore. Next off, we're going to talk about who the big players are in social media and what are some best practices, ways to think about how to use social media so that it is a better experience for everybody. And finally, I'm going to talk about our social future. Where is social media going? Where is this uh, whole trend uh, going to end up? So let's start off with privacy. This is a robo search dude. You can see he's out there in his little men in black uniform looking for data, and he is looking for data for all of you, everywhere. Anything that is online, he's searching for. These are, this is Google, this is every search engine, this is Facebook, this is all of them. They all have some little guy like this running around in their system. It's a piece of code that goes through and searches and digs out information and compiles it. We in the United States and in the West Coast in particular are very privacy orientated and I think that comes a lot because of where we came from as a people. It used to be in the past that when you were a, in, the, in the 19th century or whatever, you could literally ride to the next state, change your name, and you were who you said you were. Uh, in fact, there was a song, uh, What Was Your Name in the States? And that was a song about the fact that literally you could make a run for the border and be another person. You could change who you were based upon what you said. And your word was who you said you were in the Old West. If you said you're Bill Jones, then you're Bill Jones. And people didn't sit there and try and grill you on that uh, idea. As we move along in time, we get into the 20th century, and that is still even the case. Uh, let's take, a, for example, Herbert Heim. Herbert Heim is a Nazi war criminal. This guy was in a POW camp, released, and then worked as an OB for 20 plus years before anyone realized that he was actually a uh, war wanted war criminal. Took off through Africa and he's still at large today. Uh, we think he's dead, but nobody knows. This is 1962. This is within your lifetimes. This was still possible. The reason why this was possible 
is basically privacy through obscurity. Mountains of paperwork are just far, far too difficult to go through. You think to yourself, well, you know, who's going to want to go to the local courthouse and dig out my plot plan to find out what my house is and so on and so forth? It was impossible. It was a pain in the butt. So nobody did it. And so you had a, a sort of privacy. Additionally, records were kept where they were recorded. So, for example, if you had lived in New York, you could have a bankruptcy there, move to California, change your name, and bang, you're who you said you were because those records were kept in New York. A lot of the uh, records were also kept in things like family Bibles, uh, even as, as late as the 60s, uh, surprisingly enough. And of course, they're easy to misfile and destroy. Uh, who knows how many records were destroyed in things like Katrina or any other natural disaster we've seen. The paper is just one of those things where it's simple to get to destroy. Fires, floods, whatever. Well, that's not really what's happening today any longer. Uh, wonderful article in the Wall Street Journal, uh, 2010, talks about that they, it only takes 33 bits of unique data to identify you. Why 33 bits? Because 2 to the 33rd power is over 6 billion, so obviously we're about 6 plus billion people or so, and that's where it is. And they gave a great uh, example. Uh, if you think about a, a database, let's say Craig and Auto Parts. Uh, they have a uh, one of those uh, card things where they get you discounts and so on and so forth. And let's say they get your zip code, your gender, your age, and what car you're driving. Right? Those four things are very innocuous. I mean, how can somebody possibly get anything from these four things? Well, as you start looking at it, let's say your zip code has 20,000 people. Okay, that's, that's a lot of people. That, 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 not really you, but that's, that's a big group. Once you get the gender, that cuts it down about 50%. There's about 50% males, 50% females in this country. So now we're down to 10,000, but that's still a lot of people, right? We're, we're still fine. Age, may cut it down to a few hundred. But once you start looking at a model of a car, you could be looking at a handful. And they've now narrowed this down to a point where you're looking at maybe only tens of people instead of tens of thousands of people. And this stuff has going on every single day. Obviously, the more that is known about you, the faster and easier it is. It gets worse than that, really. This is public data, and I want you to specifically look at three things in public data here. People at work, relatives third degree, and neighbors. There's a very good chance that if somebody you know has been a deadbeat father, uh, has um, skipped out on a loan, mortgage, etc. that there is somebody who may have looked them up, found out that you work with them, and has then looked you up to see if they maybe has had any sort of connection to you and with you that you could be possibly used as a way for them to trace the person back. And on top of this, private investigators have access to even more of this data. There is very, very little that is in your lives that is truly actually private. Uh, one of the only things left is bank statements and bank accounts. And uh, after talking with a couple of PIs that uh, are friends of mine, he says, look, we don't even care about that because frankly what we do is we just go into these public databases, look for you to say something about what bank you may belong to, and then we subpoena the bank and we get your records. And it's that simple. So. Privacy is a myth, folks. I hate to tell you this, and it really is. There are very few things that are still uh, private, and most of them are being eroded every day between uh, things like uh, the um, Patriot Act and so on and so forth. We need these le this legislation, but we're also giving up some of our privacy at the same time. Also note the public data is being converted to electronic form all over the place, even old data that is coming from centuries back. This is how places like uh, the uh, Her uh, heritage and family.com and so on and so forth where you can trace back your ancestors and lineage. This is how they're doing is because that data is now going online and becoming machine readable. And once it becomes machine readable, you can search on it. So the bottom line here is I can learn more about you than you might ever want to know even if you never visit a social media site.
So sitting here and, say, and being worried about social media is somehow some sort of a privacy issue that you're going to give away all your secrets or somebody's going to find you or whatever, really doesn't matter. I take a picture of your license plate, I go down to the DMV, I apply for information as to who you are, I run the information through the website, and I find out all sorts of information on you. And I don't even, you don't even have to go near a social media site for this. So what I'm trying to get, what I want, I don't want to scare you, but what I want you to understand is that there's no reason to fear social media based on the concept that it is a privacy thing. You're going to uh, have this privacy issue. Get over it because privacy's done. So if privacy's over, how do we handle social media? What do we do with social media? What is social media and what are the, who are the big players in social media? I'm going to start off with MySpace. MySpace is the granddaddy of social media. However, it's dead. Nobody goes there. There is no action there. It is kind of one of these things where it's more of an uh, antique and a curiosity than it is a real functioning place any longer. But since it is the beginning, I thought it was a good place to start. The real action is on Facebook. Facebook is the champion of social media. One billion people, about 600,000 of those people return every single day. On average, those people spend about 20 minutes a pop. That is billions of minutes per month. The uh, last time I looked it up, uh, if you actually went back in time, the number of minutes that are spent every month on Facebook, it ends you up back when the Mastodons were running around. Uh, another thing that I found very interesting is each day 300 million photos are added and 3.2 billion comments are made. And I thought, you know, how do you get your head wrapped around 3.2 billion? I mean, that's a huge, huge number. It's like, you know, deficit numbers here. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, those numbers don't, aren't really real. <laughs> uh, I thought about this. I, I looked up what was the average novel. Average novel is about 80,000 words. Uh, and let's just, for the sake of, of argument, say that each comment that was made there of that 3.2 billion was only one word long. It's 40,000 novels worth of information per day that these people are storing and they have access to. Uh, as an interesting comparison, Library of Congress has 35 million books and about 800 and I think it was 23 miles of shelf space. 875 days. Facebook would generate that many books, they generate about one mile worth of comments per day based upon that idea. It's huge. Everybody's here and this is where, we're, where social media is. And when they're talking, people talk social media, this is what they're really talking about here. Uh, oh, hey, why did that happen? Let's try that again. There we go. All right, I'm sure everybody's heard Twitter. Twitter's another one of the big ones out there. It only has about 104 million active users, which is, sounds like a small amount, but when you look at the fact that there's about 750 messages passing through the Twitter system every second on an average day. Now, we're not talking about stuff like election nights or opening nights or Grammy nights or anything like this. We're just talking an average day. Uh, you can see that this is a huge phenomenon. I want you to think about Twitter as texting to the internet, okay? Just like you see the everybody that sits there with their phones. <laughs> this is what this is. This is texting for the internet. Instead of texting to one person on another phone, you're now texting out to the internet is what Twitter really is about. Uh, the next one that's major, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the Facebook for professionals. Okay, this is where people like myself, uh, anybody who's in a business or a uh, thing like, uh, a uh, job that is uh, high-end, maybe a, uh, somebody who's in manufacturing, an uh, engineer or whatever, you generate a, face, a uh, LinkedIn profile and you then start linking with other people inside your profession. So for example, I uh, recently had a uh, PC guy get a hold of me and say, hey, I've got one Mac that's doing this, I need it to connect to my uh, printer, how do I get this to work? Because I just don't understand. You know, da, 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 and here's how you do it. Uh, this is the uh, professional side 
of social media. And uh, when last I looked at the uh, information on LinkedIn, it has about a 90% uh, loyalty uh, return of uh, happy people. So this is not going anywhere either. Uh, last two that I want to talk about real quick is Google Plus and Pinterest. You're probably hearing a lot about Google Plus. Um, these are the new guys on the block. Uh, Google is trying to become Facebook. Of course, Google tries to become everything that they possibly can. Um, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of money involved with harvesting your data, right? If we know that uh, you like blue shoes, we can sell those, that information to advertisers. That makes them money, so on and so forth. Uh, so what they've been doing is they have been padding G Plus lately. Uh, they have been huge, kind of rolling out these huge numbers saying, well, you know, we're growing faster than Facebook and so on and so forth. Well, the reality is that nowadays if you decide you want a Gmail account, guess what? You all of a sudden have a G Plus account. Surprise, whether you know it or not. Whether you use it or not, you're now a G Plus user. Uh, so G Plus is going to be one of those things I think is going to end up um, getting stuck out in the boondocks, I think, in the, in the long run. However, Pinterest, I think, is going to be one that we want to look at. And I think Pinterest is probably one that you guys may want to really seriously peek at uh, uh, based upon what I'm seeing here. Uh, Pinterest is about creating communities of interest. Uh, when you have uh, topics that interest you, like, for example, one of them was uh, top of bar beekeeping, which is a specific type of beekeeping. There is a community that's now devoted to this sort of thing there. And everybody who has a Pinterest account can log into this and start looking for information about this specific interest that they have. So let's say you're a train collector or a modeler or whatever, a knitter or <laughs> whatever. You will probably find a Pinterest group out there for you. Uh, and I would uh, say that Pinterest is probably something you ought to keep an eye on in the future. So. Now that we know who's out there and what it is and who the major players are, I'd like to think about how do we act online? How do we utilize social media to our benefit, to everybody else's benefit? So I sat there and started thinking about this. How am I going to explain this? How am I going to get this to a very easy uh, paradigm? And the thing that came to my mind is social media is radio. And that's really all it is. Think of it as radio. For those of you who are wondering, yes, that is the actual RKO logo, for those of you who are old enough. And just like the radio, you have a transmitter, you got a receiver. Transmitter's you, the receiver's everybody else. Now, what does social media and radio have in common? Why do I think this is a good way to think about social media? Every radio has a format. Format of the radio station, whether it's headbanging metal or Golden oldies, it's something that the person who owns the station is interested in. You have a format too in social media. It's whatever you're interested in, whether it's beekeeping, knitting, whatever. That's your format. Radio also broadcasts your information. It's not like a walkie-talkie. You don't have two people talking back and forth, and it's not a unicast where one person talks to another. It is you talking to everybody. Same thing with social media. Radio has an audience. There is a group of people that this, this radio station is trying to talk to, whether it's young adults, older people, etc. L Radio has an audience. Social media also has an audience. That audience is your friends, your family, or anyone else who decides to follow what you're saying. I have a business. I obviously have a Facebook page. There are people who I don't have any real relationship to other than a business relationship that follow me and is interested in what I have to say. They are my audience in this case. I also have a personal Facebook page, which is about my family and all. My audience in that case is my friends and my family. And the people who are on my Facebook page for my business, they don't ever see that. They don't care because that's not what it's about. Finally, Every radio station has ratings, and so does social media. Ratings are going to be likes, or comments, or audience size. So when you place information up, for example, let's say in my case at the business, I say I'm going to be here tonight. 
and so on and so forth. There will be people who will say, send a comment, like for example, maybe some of you out here that have Facebook accounts may log on to my thing and say, hey, that was a fantastic, wonderful presentation, or holy cow, you took forever, or you, know, you made me snore, whatever. I will get <laughs> those comments and I will get those, I will get a rating. I'll look at this and I'll say to myself, okay, I need to cut this down or maybe I'm talking too fast, which I do have a tendency to do. Um, so to sum it up into one easy to remember phrase here, Social media broadcasts your interests to your friends who let you know if they like what you're saying. And that's really what it's about. That's how you need to think about this. Build it, set it up in this way. Now, as long as we're thinking about it this way as far as radio, well, come on, one, two, there we go. Uh, what is the, how should we apply this idea? All right, keep your posts topical, okay? If I'm on a young adult rock station, I don't want to hear about Barry Manilow coming to the local casino. It doesn't matter to me, right? Don't sit there and give your friends and family that I'm down at the Starbucks having a grande half-calf latte supremo or whatever. They don't care, okay? I, I hate to break it to you, but they really don't care. What they care about is they care about events that are happening in your life. Now, if you do have a Facebook page based upon coffee, then yeah, feel free. Put the grande mocha in there. But if your Facebook page is about uh, your family and your kids and so on and so forth, take a picture of your kids, put it up there. Take a shot of them when they're uh, at SeaWorld or when they're running around playing or when they open that gift or whatever. Don't sit there and flood your people with a bunch of stuff that uh, basically makes them just turn off, okay? This is supposed to be a, a mechanism for you to tell them what they need to know about your life. Also, practice some self-censorship for crying out loud, okay? There are seven words that you never say on the radio, right? Do the same thing here, okay? If you are gay and you're keeping it from your mom and dad, don't put it on social media, okay? It's, it's going to come out sooner or later, and there's going to be all sorts of hell to pay, and you don't want this. Keep it to yourself. Uh, additionally, if you've got younger people in, the, in your life, uh, teens, 20s, so on and so forth, uh, a lot of employers are now looking at and requiring employees to give them Facebook pages. You don't want your marijuana, you know, stickers and your, you know, half drunk, you know, face on your page when you're going for a job interview. Okay? It's just not going to work. So practice some self-censorship when you post. Make sure that what you're posting should be public and make sure those private things are private and if you're at all questioning, don't post it. Because the internet has an infinite memory. Even if you throw the page away, it is cached somewhere, and I guarantee you that when you're 19 years old and partying hard, and then you turn 30 and decide you want to run for the mayor, somebody is going to find that picture of you passed out on the couch with a Sharpie on your face, and it's going to be in the front page of the newspaper. So don't put it up in the first place, ever. All right. Well, probably not this crap, but you know, honestly, that's true, that's true. But you know, it, it's, I find this very funny because there are a lot of younger people who don't even, it just completely goes over their head. It's like, well, I'm having a good time, it's like so much fun, woohoo! You know, well, you know what? Yeah, exactly. Let them know. It is out there and it is happening. And if they exercise a little restraint, it will go a lot farther for them than if they're out there, you know, wiped out. Uh-oh. <laughs> so last, uh, last little bit here, I want to wrap up more or less with a, uh, an idea of maybe where we're heading uh, with this social media and why social media has moved so fast and why there are so many people using this. Uh, and the way I want to do this uh, is I want to uh, use a quote by our good Good friend Steve. Uh, I love this quote 
I try to work it into every single presentation. Uh, it's just, it's one of those quotes that I think is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, when we were an agrarian nation, all cars were trucks. But as people moved more towards urban centers, people started to get into cars. I think the PCs are going to be like trucks. Less people will need them. And this transformation is going to make some people uneasy. What he is saying here, back to the, your, your days in, in uh, uh, the classroom, tablets is to cars as PCs are to trucks. All right, what I want to say here is social media is to cars as HTML is to trucks. There will always be a need for those people who understand HTML, who understand PHP and CSS and all these background things. But for the rest of us, the 99% of us, we don't care and we don't want to know. We want something that we can stick a picture up on the screen so that mom and dad, cousins and aunts, and so on and so forth can see it and can have the information, and we don't want to be bothered with it. So I'm going to take you back in time for a second. Remember 1990? Early days of the internet. Back then, we were still buying film. God, that's old. Uh, we wanted to go put a picture up on the website. Buy the film, load the camera, shoot the image, develop the film, which may take a few days at that. Scan the image, write the HTML, upload the image, upload the HTML, download the site menu, upload the menu, update, revise, tell someone to go look at it. Two, maybe three days, probably more like a week or two because you're probably not going to just go shoot one picture and then wipe the film out and send it in because it costs too darn much. All right, let's fast forward a little bit. 2013, all right, now we're shooting on digital, so hoorah, we just shoot the image. We're probably now working on uh, WordPress, so we write a post, we upload the image, upload the post, maybe update our menu if we have to. Tell Google, well, for me, that's about one to two hours, maybe a day, if I get busy and so on and so forth. Leap years faster, but social media. I shoot it with my iPhone, I tap the button, I add a comment, I publish, 10 to 20 seconds, I'm done. And this is exactly why social media is getting to be so big and why so many people are using it. Because it literally is trivial to add something. Once it becomes trivial to add something, and you have the ubiquitous networks and the mobile computing based upon your iPhones and your iPads, why not? We can go and have diarrhea of the network basically at that point. <laughs> so there it is. This is it. It's non-technical, it's fast, and we have the shift. And this is the important thing, and this is why this is happening. This is why you're seeing this. This is why you might as well get on the bandwagon, because this is where we're going. You're not going to be writing HTML in the future. You're not going to be putting up a bunch of stuff on the, your, your, your WordPress. This is where you're moving to. Now, what do I think we're going to see in the future as we move on down the line? Well, first thing. I want you to remember the World Wide Web as we know it today is just about 25 years old. Some of the technology goes back a little before that. Uh, HTTP, the actual HTTPD was actually about 23 years old, I believe, this year. Social media is only about seven years old. We are barely in the infancy of social media. And just like any infant, there are growing pains, things that are going to be done wrong, things that are going to be stupid, and things that are going to have to work themselves out this is part of what I'm talking about here tonight. We want to start doing some etiquette. We want to start creating a system that is going to be usable for people instead of just being annoying. There are about 100 social media sites out there nowadays. A lot of them are foreign. Uh, a lot of them are extremely uh, focused. You know, it's, uh, you know, uh, guys with one left shoe that's bigger than the other, dot com or whatever. I mean, they're, they're really get to be kind of insane uh, with how focused down they are. You're going to see some consolidation, and you're going to see, I believe, a triumvirate up, uh, end up being uh, in control of social media, at least in the Americas and the, the Western Hemisphere at this point. Uh, one of those people is going to be Facebook. Okay, everybody says to me, well, but they, they missed their target price on their... There are uh, their shares and they're uh, you know, having trouble with this and that and the other thing. You know what? It's fine. Don't worry about it. Facebook is here for the foreseeable future as long as they don't do something stupid like go through and uh, set up some sort of a uh, rule that basically makes everybody flee the, the planet. 
uh, you're here for a while. Google Plus, I think it's questionable whether or not that'll ever exist or will continue to exist. Uh, I think it's very, very iffy. Finally, Pinterest and LinkedIn will grow. So here's the triumvirate. Facebook for your personal information, personal things that are interesting to you, uh, that are about you. Pinterest, things that interest you, communities, etc. LinkedIn, your professional life. You're still a professional out there. That's where you're going to go. And that's going to be your triumvirate right there, I believe, in the future. You're going to hit those three sites, and that's where a majority of the people are going to be uh, at. So what do I want you to take away from this? Well, once again, it's in its infancy. And just like any baby, it's growing. And when you have things that you worry about as a parent when they're babies, like getting them fed and getting them diapered, and as they grow, you're not worried about getting them diapered and fed, you're worried about them crawling on the bookshelf. And this is what we're seeing here. We're seeing that we're getting out of the growing pain stage and we're starting to get to the point where people are starting to realize that, okay, this is a viable, it's not gonna just be a flash in the pan. We are gonna end up using this uh, tool. So how do we use it more effectively, more responsibly? And it's growing. Dun, dun, dun. Do not fear the reaper. Social media is not the end of the privacy, folks. It's not going to be. If you exercise a little self-restraint by not saying, for example, on your public page, hey, we're in St. Croix, come please rob us, you're going to be just fine. Okay? Be intelligent about what you post where. Last thing goes back out. If you wouldn't shout it from the highest mountain, don't put it on your page. Okay? It's the really the most basic rule. Okay? If it's not something you would tell your, pra your pastor or you would stand up in front of an audience like this and say, or even uh, if you have an opinion, okay, before you spout your opinion, ask yourself, is this something that I would tell this random gentleman right here? You know, would I say, am I willing to say that as, I'm Chris Barsis and I think your hat is great, okay? If you're not willing to say that to this man's face, don't put it up on the internet, okay? Get, you know, if you're not going to be willing to stand up behind your words, don't put them up there, okay? Uh, you will notice, uh, if you ever see me out on the internet in other places where I have comment, you will find that I always comment as Chris Barsis. My photo is there. I have a gravatar. It always links back to me, whatever I say, and I guarantee you, I never say anything I'm going to regret because I always know that it's me saying it, and I'm not going to say that in front of somebody that is not, uh, you know, that I wouldn't say to a, just anybody. So, with that, that's the end. I'd be happy to take any questions or comments or anything you've got to say. In the back. Any, any comments on the prediction of the death of your personal computer? Okay, sure. Why not? Uh, I'm going to be, uh, I fall into the same category as jobs. Uh, the personal computer is not going to die completely. There will always be a personal computer of some variety. Is it going to look exactly the way it looks today? Mm, probably not. There will probably be new interfaces and new ideas that come across. Uh, I saw a patent recently for a 3D version of OS X. Mm, that sounds interesting. How are they going to set that up? Maybe glasses? Maybe touch? I don't know. There will be something out there that will do the heavy lifting because, quite frankly, as amazing as this uh, iPad is, and I use it for probably about 80% of my business, there are certain things you just can't do. Your finger is not uh, a uh, fine enough uh, pointing device or manipulation device. Uh, when you're working with Photoshop files and so on and so forth, it becomes very difficult for you to trace around things with your finger. It's really just not going to be there. So you're going to have these devices that are going to be uh, adjuncts and are going to be things that are going to be with you all the time to do very fast, high-speed things like social media or getting your email or checking something on the web or in the case of my wife, she has an app to Joann's, bang, hits that, oh, hey, look, I got a coupon, bang, off we go. But there's going to be always some sort of a computer in my opinion. Yes, sir. Do these principles also apply to Twitter? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, Twitter is... Um, uh, as, as a point, a yes. particular point, with regard to, it seems to me, with Twitter, people put in their opinions in things like uh, political. It's much more 
uh, political. Is that something that could cause people problems if they're not very careful by what they put on Twitter? Um, yes and no. Twitter is um, a little bit less, uh, it's a little less gratuitous in that, uh, for example, let's take Facebook. If I have uh, 350 followers, let's say, that are out there, and I write some sort of a diatribe uh, that's against some form of political person, one side or the other, whatever, those 350 people see that, and they get, they get nailed by that and so on and so forth. Uh, and it ends up sitting out there and being uh, easily found. Twitter is not quite as simple as that, not quite as easy. It's closer to a text message. You can still find the information. You can still search on it. I would say, you know, the golden rule and uh, just basic values, you know, uh, should always. Oh, government harvesting. Well, you know, of course, according to they must be going through everything. According to them, no. Um, is uh, is that the truth? I don't know. Uh, you know, I know for a fact that certainly uh, the owners of Facebook. Uh, and Twitter and so on and so forth, they have the machines, they have information about what's going through because they can uh, handle, they give me these statistics like 3.2 million uh, comments being put up. So they know what those comments are. And if we assume they're at least as good as Google, they should be able to harvest, they take those comments, parse those comments into something that they can then uh, do searches on or get information on. You know, how many times did uh, the word Obama pop up in the last 24 hours or whatever? I'm sure it's out there. Now, do they use this to any nefarious purpose? Heck, if I know, you know, there's no way to know. I, I can't tell you that. I don't work there, unfortunately. Than, yes, sir? Rather than nefarious purposes, if you just look at the scandals, of see how many people lose their jobs or get in trouble because of the thoughtless things they have tweeted yes. about yeah. any issues. You know, it, the thing about Twitter is somebody's following, they're going to see it and the they're going to retweet, retweet and spread around, oh, so-and-so just said this. And it works just like gossip on the playground at middle school. Actually, it's even worse because, you know, unlike the game of phone where, you know, it usually gets corrupted after about the fourth or fifth time, retweets don't get corrupted, folks. It comes out of your mouth and it continues on down the line just as you wrote it. Uh, there have been numerous tweet wars back and forth. I think the latest one was Justin Bieber and some band member from a, a rock band. Uh, they pumped out over the la an hour a couple of hundred tweets back and forth of flaming each other about some topic which, you know, frankly, nobody actually cares about besides them. Uh, so, you know, anyhow, yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. I started a, a Facebook page when it became the rage. Yeah. Um, okay, so my kids are on. Okay. okay. And I started it because I wanted to see what was happening. Good. Okay, so everything that goes on my kids' pages as it ends up on mine. Yeah. And and or keeps going down the line like my, and I just don't want all that crap. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what they have to say. My own kids, and I don't know how to uh, you know, stop it. Okay, there are ways inside Facebook to stay, to basically say, I don't want information from uh, these groups of people. For example, I believe you can say. Uh, I want uh, information that are public posts, or I only want posts that are friends, or only friends of friends, or only close friends, I think. There are a bunch of uh, uh, settings in there. Uh, getting into that right now, not really what I was planning to do tonight. It is there. Uh, search under, probably under privacy, wouldn't that be? I think. I, I believe it's under privacy, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, it could be under settings too. It, like I say, it's one of these things I don't typically do that because, of course, my idea on Facebook is I want, uh, especially you know, my business, I want people to follow me. Uh, so. I get you. I absolutely get you. Yeah, there is a there is settings in there. I know it is. I've seen it. Uh, in fact, I get nailed by uh, one of my. One of my lovely in-laws plays Lucky Seven Slots, and I get nailed by, come play Lucky Seven Slots, like every like hour and a half, and it's just like, okay, no, you get turned off. I'm sorry. Yes, sir? At what point do you see that um, this whole social media thing is going to be limited by how much data we can store, and where is it going to be stored?
Well, let's see. Um, we they generate is nothing but data pollution. <laughs> Well, I would, I would almost argue that it is data pollution right now in some respects uh, because it is highly obnoxious, some of the stuff that we see. Um, at this point in time, we are, you know, you, me, everyone here, we are easily able to buy four plus terabytes worth of hard drive space just in one single hard drive. Uh, you look at uh, data farms and so on and so forth, they're well into the petabytes and the exabytes, I think, or pretty close to it by now. These are billions and billions and billions of terabytes. You know, we are talking humongous amounts of data. Um, is there any reason why it has to stop? No, I don't think so. It really comes down to the question of does the company itself see any value to storing this data any longer? Uh, if they can use that data in some fashion to make money, hard drives are cheap. You know, I mean, we pick them up for a couple hundred bucks. They pick them up significantly higher because they're, uh, you know, server-grade drives. But there's really no reason to stop. And in the end, maybe you don't want them to stop. Uh, here's an interesting way to think about this and the thing to think about in the future. How many times have we heard about uh, somebody going into a, a 1904 house somewhere and tearing a wall down and they find a... Uh, a diary or a Civil War thing or uh, a newspaper that was used as something such and you know whoa here's this thing well Facebook and Twitter and some of these other things as they store that data kind of also become that sort of a repository uh, in the end so maybe as we go down the line there's really no reason to ever get rid of it or stop in the center please do you have any concern about taking a picture with your iPhone and posting it and letting everyone know immediately where you're at? Um, I, uh, it depends. Uh, vast majority of the time that I do it, let me think about this for a second. Actually, the answer to that really is no, uh, now that I really think about it, because of the self-censoring issue. The only time I ever take a picture uh, that goes posted to my business is a business picture that is uh, someplace that I'm at, like for example, uh, Union Tribune TV. I took a shot of their studio while I was there. I uh, posted that. Uh, do I care? No, because I was there. I have no problem with that. Uh, do I have a problem with posting a picture from SeaWorld of my kid playing around? No, that's exactly what I want. Now, uh, what I do say is instead of posting it up as a public image, I post it up as a private image from my friends and family and so on and so forth. Um, do I have pictures of uh, my wife running around the house in her panties? Heck no. <laughs> Those are not going anywhere near the internet ever. So do I have a problem with it? No, because I, I, I exercise that self-censorship. If there's a question, if there's a problem with that, there is a way inside iOS uh, when you post the picture up. You do not have to put a location. You have to touch the location button to put the location. Get rid of the metadata. Well, there's the metadata, of course, that, that's out there. So if you, you download it, you can see the metadata, granted. Um, do I care? Not really. Anybody can... You've got pictures of kids in your house or collector cars in your garage. But everybody knows that. Just go out to the checkmate. Sure they do. If they, if they know me and they know my, uh, what I do and what I'm into, they're going to be able to go and get my house plan right out of public records if they wish it. They're going to be able to get any information that they want about anything that I've applied for, licenses, yeah, so on and so forth. Harder, though, than just taking the GPS data and blocking. Oh, granted, certainly. I won't argue with that. You're absolutely right. It is more difficult. I've got alarms. I've got a gun. I'm not worried. You know? That's what insurance is for, you know? I grant you, there is a certain amount, especially with kids, that there is, that there is you know, that little, eh. But for me, I'm not too worried about it, personally. If you are, then so exercise self-censorship. Certainly. Exercise self-censorship. Don't take the picture. Or take it with your SLR camera, and then upload it. There's ways around it. You can always find a way around it to make yourself safe. Jim, I see you. Uh, I get stuff on email that says, Facebook sure. has to do with one of my friends. Um, I don't really want them. I don't really want it in my email. Okay. 
Well, obviously, you can always hit the junk mail filters. You can always still write rules that states, for example, anything that comes from so-and-so with a subject of such-and-such -such is automatically junk and goes whooshing into the junk mail when you never even see it. Uh, you can also talk to your friend. Say, dude, I'm really getting annoyed by this. Could you please take me off your list of these things? I really would appreciate that. Coming from Facebook, there's a way to stop notifications going into your email. That's in the settings too. All that stuff. Yep. Yeah, all that stuff that you can customize. Certainly. There's always places. Yes, ma'am. Facebook. I can't probably link it is to people I don't know that I'm in one of the Okay, yeah. But what, how do they find me? I, mean, I don't know these people. I don't see some people are doing this. Okay, have you ever uh, gone to a fair or uh, anything and filled out one of those, send me, the, give me this card and I'll give you a car thing? There you go, right there. That's how they got your address. Uh, also, other ways that they get your address. Uh, your friend who has a PC and has that horrible, uh, you know, Swiss cheese operating system. Uh, they harvest the name out of his address book and then, of course, just send it right to you. It's pretty simple. No problem at all. Certain than you. Clever person. Break in and post on to you. Oh, yes. Yeah. And he, there's nothing that's perfectly safe. Even though you've been very specific about family and friends. Absolutely. There's, there's nothing that's ever perfectly 100% safe. I mean, look, if, the, if, the, if we have China breaking into the government, somebody's going to be able to break so in that, somewhere else. That's one of the major... Uh, Certainly. Certainly. Problems. Absolutely. It's the same thing as uh, somebody can break into your house, too. There's nothing you can do about it. The best you can do is attempt to create enough barriers to where it's a pain in the butt for them to where they just go, you know what, I'm going to go find something easier to do. You know, uh, it's the same thing with cars. If they want your car, they'll get it. The creepiest thing about Facebook is that uh, you'll get continual messages about someone that would like to tap. Yes. And when you look at that, it could be a friend of a friend. Of a friend of a friend. Oh, yes. That could be a million people. Yes, it certainly could be. And, you know, as somebody who is really a, uh, a Facebook person would say, this is what's so great about it because I can, you know, get this person that I never, uh, I don't remember from uh, high school got in touch with me because they knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who found me. You know, it's, it's just like any other tool, right? Firearms can be used for, a, for positive or they can be used for negative. And it's just like all other tools. There are positive benefits to tools and there are negative benefits to tools, okay? It's how you use the tool that makes the difference. And if the tool is being used in a positive manner, then you, re you reduce a lot of these things that are annoying and um, get people ticked off. Ma'am. I'm saying that because a lot of times, I've taught many, many, many years ago, and my students are finding me on yes. Facebook. Yes. And it is so much fun to know what they are doing now as adults. So you have a positive experience with this. It's been very good. To, and also we have a son that uh, saying he had a cancer. He posts every day. Exactly. And so we know every day how he's doing. Yeah. And see, this is a positive use of that social media, which is a great way to go. So. I think we are, uh, I'm probably running myself way over. Oh, yeah, I probably have. Sorry about that. Right. Uh, <laughs> Charles, there you go. I'll hand the mic over to you. Well, thank you very much.